Um, so I live in Greenwood, Mississippi. Um, I'm from here originally and was gone for 20 years and about a year ago moved back and I'm actually the uh, director of youth at my church. Oh, awesome. Well, welcome so, to the Bible study. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I tried to join, I think one other time and, um, something came up and I had to like duck out right as I got in. So I'm hoping to get back in the habit of, um, joining. I'd love to, to, do this. Normally Thursday mornings are pretty good for me. So good. So where are you ladies from? All over. (laughs) (laughs) Go around, go around the zoom (laughs) and tell y'all, tell where y'all are from. Well, I'm from Northeast Nebraska, almost, almost South Dakota, practically. Oh, wow. Okay. (laughs) Birmingham, Alabama. Southeast Michigan. North of Orlando, Florida. Go ahead, Stacy. Silmar, California, the mountains in the background of all the pictures for reference. <laughs> and there's a candy. Does she want to talk? If she can't talk, because I know some people are working, um, you can type. Okay. I'm I'm from Oakland, Iowa. Iowa, okay. Awesome, my sister's in Iowa, and I'm outside of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I'm Huntsville, Alabama. I'm by Vail. Yeah. About an hour and a half away from Vail. Yeah, so are you enjoying your cool weather this morning, Vail? Could not believe how chilly it was. (laughs) It was like- Great walking weather, great walking weather. Yes, I walked out and I was like, oh my goodness, it's so chilly. I ran in the house and was like, it's actually chilly outside, y'all. So- Can you send that here, please? Send it here. (laughs) We had to go to work at two o'clock this morning and we walked outside and I was like, good Lord, it's already hot. And it's like 2.15, how is this possible? It's two o'clock in the morning. Wow. Aaron's like, that's nothing. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we're going to do Proverbs 2 today. And um, welcome, Whitney. I'm glad you're, where are you from again? Uh, Greenwood, Mississippi. Mississippi, okay. So I'm between like Memphis and Jackson, Mississippi. So okay. That's where I am, so. Um, well, we're glad you're here. And uh, so I did Facebook Live this morning. I was wondering if anybody was going to join us new. And I realized that I didn't have the link up. So I was like, um, I probably should have done that before, but I was already running late to get on the Bible study as normal. So um, hopefully people will scroll down. So um, Jan, hey, Jan, how are you? Doing great. We have lots of fires out here, but doing great. Are you in California? Yes. Okay, there you go. Stacy is in- ooh, Which part, here. which part, which part? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> um, in Riverside, Lake Elsinore. Shut the front door. You're like an hour and a half from me. Where are you at? I'm in Silmar, the other place where all the fires oh, are. Okay. Usually. <laughs> I'm in San Diego right now, um, but I'll be driving back home in a little bit because we are dropping off clothing for those that have been affected by the fire, so. Wow, that's awesome. The toiletries. Thank you, Shannon. All those extra toiletries I bought at CVS is coming in handy today. Oh, yay. That makes me so happy. That makes me so happy. Oh, my goodness. That's awesome. Yeah, I wish I could just ship you some because I have a whole bunch. But then again, one of the organizations here, we have like our homeless population is like growing like crazy here because we were like the number one city to live in in the U.S. And so everyone's coming. And so they're having an increase of people and so they're asking for deodorant and all of that kind of stuff and I was like okay I can do that so um God is just gracious and hopefully the coupons will keep on coming and we'll be able to keep on getting those deals so but that's exciting that's so awesome so excited um okay so we're gonna do Proverbs 2 and I will be honest I was gonna do Proverbs 3 but we had already done Proverbs 3 I don't know if y'all remember all my my uh I guess (laughs) non-newbies my originals I don't know what to call y'all my originals Stacy, that's your job to come up with a name. So. Oh, geez, the original. She's just a gangster, but original God people. We could, we'll make a new word. <laughs> well, original group, original group. There we go. <laughs> um, so we'll, 
so I already did that. And so I was looking, and this is going to be a hard, out of all times to join, this is going to be hard. But Whitney, you said you help with the youth. This is actually going to be really beneficial for you, actually, um, a lot, especially with helping with the youth. Um, so this is going to be hard. I'm just going to warn you, but it, I felt like it's just so needed. We need to know about these things. We can't just keep on. I think the problem is in the church, we kind of skirt around issues and we don't address them. And so this, we're going to address them today. Um, and it's just by following God's word, it comes in and comes in. So all that to say, Sue, do you mind praying us in? Sure. Are you, so you're going to physical therapy? I am, but I'll listen as long as I can. I tried last week to take you guys in with me and just turn the sound off, but there's music in there and you couldn't hear anything. So, cause I have to, I'm on the bike to warm up and I thought, well, I can, at least I can get 10 or 15 more minutes in, but no, it didn't work. So, <laughs> but anyway, that's okay. At least I get part of it. So yes, yes. But right, we'll take whatever time we can get with you, we'll take it. Yes, Aww. for sure. That's how I feel about you guys. I'm like, I'm going to get a little bit. I got to get my fix in. It's time, it's time, yes, our time with, our, with our people, our people, our people. <laughs> our people. <laughs> All right, let's bow our heads. Most precious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, dear Lord, for being able to um, get together with each and one of these precious dear ladies. We thank you for Whitney that has joined us um, this week. And we just thank you and praise you that our group grows little by little and that um, more people can study your word together, dear Lord. It's such a, such a blessing to be able to study with other ladies. I just thank you and praise you for that. I do want to pray for the people that are experiencing uh, the loss of homes and displacement and everything else because of the fires out in California, dear Lord. I just pray that you be there and that you would lead and guide, dear Lord. I know you control the winds and the rains. And if you, if it can be within your will, dear Lord, please send rain to help the firefighters put those fires out to spare the people's homes. Um, I pray you be there to comfort and to lead and to guide the, to those that have lost homes and that they would find places to uh, reestablish themselves. I pray you be with Shannon as she leads us through a rather difficult subject, a rather difficult chapter, dear Lord, that you would speak through her, that um, our hearts and minds would be open once again to the Holy Spirit's leading in our lives and what we may need to change and or what we may need to um, help implement in our own churches. Who knows, dear Lord, but just lead and guide in our hearts. And uh, we ask for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as we study together today. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you, Sue, so much. Um, okay, so Stacy, do you mind reading verses one through five? No, I do not mind reading. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's a pet peeve of mine grammatically when people say, do you mind? And they say, yes. Well, that means you do mind. The correct answer is <laughs> no, comma, I do not mind. Thank you. That is your grammar lesson for the day, kids. Okay, sorry. To where again, I got sidetracked in my grammar because, you know, grammar is my life. Two through what? Or chapter two through? One through five. One through five. Okay, thank you. Moral benefits of wisdom. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Okay, so the first four verses of this chapter are a condition followed by two results and verses five through eight, nine through 11, verses 12 through 15 and 16 through 19 describe the benefits and of the results being rescued from the way of evil and for the forbidden woman. And verses 20 through 22 are the conclusion. Um, I always like seeing these little, like kind of giving us a, you know, what's going, what's coming ahead. Uh, verses one, uh, let's see here. Rather than just learning about wisdom, the student is first told to accept rather than despise or reject and internalize wisdom then to call out to and passionately seek it. The result is a reverent relationship with God, which is a prerequisite of true wisdom. So like I title this as what is wisdom? Wisdom can never um, benefit us if it is not received and treasured. This I have never thought about. And this has really shown me the importance of wisdom. I, you know, we always hear wisdom, Proverbs is wisdom. You know, I always read a chapter of, of a day. I've always done that for like years. And it's just kind of like, I, it's like, 
I realized by doing these things, there are so many things as a believer, I do flippantly, you know, it's like, I don't, it's like, you know, yeah, we're supposed to have wisdom, you know, but what is that? Like I was listening to a sermon one time and uh, it was Paul Washer who I really like. And, you know, he was like talking about like um, he was a brand new believer and he asked the guy, you know, well, what does it mean by this? I can't remember what it was. Um, and the guy never really answered his question. And because I don't, I think that this is like one of those things where sometimes we talk about wisdom, but do we really know what it is? You know, I mean, that's me. I mean, I, I really don't. Um, but I think we gain wisdom by God's word first and foremost. That is where our wisdom comes from, by being in God's word and letting it guide us and direct us. But also, I think that's why older women in the church really need to be mentoring younger women. I think older Older people have so much wisdom and they have gifts to pass on. And whenever, you know, I just remember one time I went to, um, I used to go to the, um, uh, not the, it's not a nursing home. It was a, um, what is it called when it's not a nursing home? Assisted living. Thank you. Assisted, do not say nursing home and assisted living because they no. will yell at you. They will. No. They will get mad at you very game, much. Man. And do they not play, do not play cutlass old hymns or hymns, the new cut list versions either, because they don't like that either, just so you know. Um, but I once told them, you know, like a lot of them felt like they couldn't leave or something. And this was years ago. And they were like, you know, I said, well, you're as, as older people, you've walked through so much, you have so much wisdom to give, you know, um, I would have loved to see our, and I loved whenever I had our youth, I brought our youth there at one time. And just them sit, I, I told them, I was like, you need to sit around and just like ask questions, like ask them about their walk with the Lord, ask them that way they could gain, gain some wisdom and knowledge from them. And then it, it benefits both. It makes the people who feel like they can't go anywhere. It gives them value because I think a lot of the times, whenever we feel like we're just stuck inside or we can't go anywhere, we, it's like, we, we feel like we're no longer needed, especially a lot of like, I remember I had my Bible study with the older women they felt like they couldn't do anything because they, they were homebound. That's why we went and visited in their home. And by going in there, just showing that you care, um, that they're not forgotten and that they are valuable, um, which is what we all desire, right? Um, for wisdom and, and our in wisdom, we have that to give to others. Again, we've talked about this a lot where our past can help others to go through situations. We always wonder why we go through things. Um, which I'm still waiting on Karen to write a book for all the things that she's going to, I'm going to keep on harping her and harping her until she does it. Um, and just be able to help people go through things. And that's where wisdom, wisdom first and foremost comes from God, but that wisdom, whenever we mentor and help others, we can point them to God's word, um, first and foremost, but also through our experiences, um, and everything. And so, Verse four, treasure my commands within you. God's intention is that you and I make his wisdom our own. We are to learn it from the Bible. Nobody is to know it or see. Pastors are charged by God with helping us to grow, but we must make his word ours so as to keep it with us. And so this is just a personal relationship with God. When we have that personal relationship with him, you know, that therefore that that's whenever his word, this is our guidebook from him. This is our love letter from him. Sometimes it's a little hard to read and sometimes, but it's beautiful. And we've seen that going through the old Testament. Um, and so people pour into us, but eventually as we grow closer to God, our wisdom becomes our own, then we can share it with others. And I love that. That's what's so cool. So we can take what we've learned from older people and it doesn't even have to be like, I'm not like even not even an age. It may just be that they can be, I've, I've learned so much from the girls I mentor. It's unreal. Um, but also it may just be that they may not be older in age, but they're older in their spiritual walk. And so you may have somebody who is 60, you know, or let me say like 75, not saying that that's old, but 75 and they just become a believer. Well, in that case, if there's somebody who's younger than that and comes alongside and says, Hey, I'm, I'm willing to sit down with you. Let's go to the Bible. Let's talk about like, you know, you're a new believer. What are you struggling with? You know, what can we, what versus, you know, and so it, I'm not talking, it's more spiritual age than physical age, but also physical age too. Um, and so in these few verses, Solomon described many ways that we must seek after wisdom. We receive it. We treasure it. We incline it, apply it, cry out, lift up the voice, seek and search. 
So the knowledge of God, in short, knowledge of God refers to personal intimacy with him through obedience and his word. Um, and we've talked a lot about this, and um, especially I love the, the daily writings and whenever y'all comment and everything about really taking God's word and making it like personal and, you know, and in that intimacy, he will, he will um, convict us, but that conviction is good because that cleanses us from, and um, we can repent and then turn to him. So a lot of, a lot of stuff in this little section. So does anybody have anything on that section? There's a lot thrown out of there. My notes didn't look like a lot, but now that I'm reading, I'm like, man, there was a lot in there. I think it's important, uh, Shannon, to differentiate that there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom because um, my, my husband is so smart. He's so, so smart. He can read, he can read one thing and he's got it. And I almost have to memorize something to in turn, you know, I just, to get it, I have to, but I have, I have, um, common sense that that man does not have. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I have a gut feeling I have, and they're almost always right. And I just think, I do think it's a sixth sense, but, and he doesn't have that. He's clueless to a lot of stuff like that. So just because you don't feel super smart or you don't, the school was a struggle for you or whatever is doesn't mean you don't have wisdom because when the wisdom is part of walking through life and just experiences you've gained and stuff like that, where, you know, if you have hard, a hard time, um, picking up on things or stuff like that, like school was a challenge for you or whatever, doesn't mean you don't have anything to share. And I just think a lot of women feel that way because they don't feel like they're real smart or whatever. I hope that made sense. But anyway, no, that's great. That's so true. Sue, you're right. Um, and I am too, my husband is so smart. I'm like, how do you know all this stuff? He's like, I paid attention in school. And I was like, oh, well, there's the, that was the problem. I didn't. So <laughs> this is there for a lot of wrong reasons. So, but Katie, what were you going to say? Oh, last week I was talking about Gloria Thorne that put, um, King James scripture to music. Um, she also did Proverbs two, one through nine. <laughs> so I was reading that and it was like playing in my head, the song. <laughs> I love it. Such a good way to memorize scripture. And because Sue is so, my quote for this, knowledge is knowing what to say. Wisdom is knowing when to say it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that is really you know, good. I think, yeah, I think that's a big thing that's lost is there's a lot of people that have knowledge and there's a lot of people that have wisdom. Then there's a small group that have both at the same time. Mm. So I think that's a lot of it too. And why I think our society conflicts so much is because some people have a lot of knowledge, but they don't have the wisdom to interject their opinion in the right way or the right time or, you know, and so it's, it's interesting to watch that dynamic of, okay, well, that's great. You feel that way. You should let the other person who doesn't feel the same way speak what they speak. And at the end of the day, if you don't agree, you can agree to disagree and the world is not going to end. However, we've lost the ability to have polite discourse or to agree to disagree. So I think that's where like the whole discussion of knowledge versus wisdom or having both comes in. I think that's how to like, say it, the hmm? proper way to say it. Mm -hmm. how to say it. Yeah, and yeah. I but you got to know the proper way to say it without being offensive. Exactly. And I, I completely agree because it's like there's certain situations where you get in and it's like. I it's so bad. I say this all the time. It's like, didn't your parents teach you? Oh, wait, because, <laughs> you know, I mean, I kind of grew up in a very other end of the spectrum kind of house. So, you know, you were polite at all times, even if you didn't want to be. And mm -hmm. it was, it was kind of bad in a way, because then it took me until I was an adult to learn the right way to say no, or the right way to say what I was thinking or feeling mm -hmm. to where now, like, because of that whole knowledge and wisdom. And it's like, okay, well, there's times where I know stuff about a topic, but I have the wisdom to keep my mouth shut because I know it is not going to go well. I'll just be over here quiet. And if I am asked for my opinion, well, then you're welcome because it's coming but it's kind of one of those things where it just seems like anymore you know those little things and then to your exact point Shannon about 
older folks not feeling seen, heard, or valued. It's that little thing, like even if you're just in the grocery store and you happen to see an older person, smile at them, say something nice to them, you know, ask them how their day is. I know I had a, I was looking at jam and an elderly gentleman said, oh, are you having trouble picking? And I said, yeah. And then he gave me this entire, well, until I took the time to listen, but he told me about the brand he worked for and where he worked and how they donated to charity and how they didn't talk about it. And it was this whole thing. And then he just kind of had like a spring in his step when he left. And it was like, I may have been the only human contact that poor dude had the whole day. That's not right. So, yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of that too. in the, um, in the, the rest of the year when we hit the profits, I think we're going to see how they were able to go and speak to people and tell whenever God was telling them to say something, we're going to learn how to do that and everything too, because it is hard. It's hard whenever you really feel convicted to go talk to somebody. And that is where the wisdom comes in on how to say it. Um, I have learned how not to say it a lot and I have learned how to really, you know, do things the wrong way in that sense, but I'm learning, I'm trying to learn the wisdom and that's why Proverbs has been really, really good for me lately, just to be able to um, just seek out how God um, wants me to speak. And I told my husband yesterday, we were going for a walk and I was like, man, people just, I know people are like, I just get so excited about things that I, I feel like everyone else should be that excited too. Even if it is criticism, like I'm like, but it's exciting because look at how bad it is and everything. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. And <laughs> I'm just like, but, but do you need, do you not see though? Like I, it's so easy to take when people come up and say something that I do wrong. It's so easy to take if I, cause I know that their heart is for the Lord. And, and so, but I feel like, again, that, that may just be missing now. It's like, people don't understand the spirit of defense or the spirit of defense is up. Beta Satan is there. And so um, it's just seeing the people's heart and knowing and understanding, okay, if these people are really coming to me out of love and they love me, then, you know, take it to heart and don't get offended, you know, but I, I, I guess that's just really hard nowadays for people to understand. So let's go to the next section. Stacy, if you don't mind reading verses six through 10. Six through 10, okay. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless, for he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Okay, so verse seven, as we store up God's commands, he stores up success as our reward. Success is competence or sound judgment. Upright means corresponding to God's ethical instructions. The Hebrew word for integrity implies genuineness and re reliability. It is translated honorable and honest. And we're going to see a lot about integrity coming up. It's just integrity is going to come up probably in almost every chapter because integrity as believers is so important and I can't remember who said today in the daily writings um it was either I, I can't remember who but um we should live a life in a way that whenever we're um, accused of something that um our life would show that against what people are accusing of us of something that is false I don't know if I said that right but whoever wrote it wrote it I think maybe maybe it was I can't remember Katie was it you or I can't remember Irene. I don't remember. So at any rate, it was awesome. Um, and so he is a shield to those who walk uprightly. God not only gives wisdom in his word, he actively works to defend, guard, and preserve those who walk in his ways. So this is, so some of the things like are hard for me to grasp like now, because it doesn't seem like that in some ways. Um, it seems like a, a lot more lately, people who are not, who are trying to do good get ridiculed and people who do bad don't and everything but I just always have to go back to God has a plan for that um and we only see a finite of it and God sees the whole picture and so we just have to trust God as hard as it is sometimes to just understand what he's doing um and then verse nine every good path track um refers to cart tracks and wagon ruts. I saw this in a, a commentary. While the earth is soft, wagon wheels press the tra trails that others are obliged to follow after it dries and hardens. We make tracks, ruts, paths for our life. Wisdom helps us to make good and useful ruts or habits. 
And so this is kind of, to me, is just a really smart way of saying, you know, we learn from our past and make our, and try to make our future better. And so the things that we have made, um, the things that we have messed up on in the past, we can't beat ourselves up over. We cannot beat ourselves up over our past. There is nothing, absolutely nothing that we can do about our past. Nothing. Like, and we can only change our future. So therefore, that is why the wisdom comes in handy because I, I've said many times, even with my past abortion, I'm able to use that to change and help the girls that are coming up in, in that place that I was in as a teenager. And they... I can tell them why it's not a good decision, um, biblically in um, every which way. And so because of that, um, I have learned from my tracks that were rocky and bad, but God has smoothed them over whenever he has forgiven us. We are, we are forgiven and we can't look back and beat ourselves up. It is so hard. I feel like it's so hard as women, like Sue was saying, I feel like men are more like, um, they're like more logical, at least my husband is, and women are more like not logical fillers, you know, and everything. So it's hard to be able to um, grasp the forgiveness of God. But whenever we do grasp it, Satan no longer has that hold on us. And we are no longer bound to that sin because we have repented. We have got to realize that God does not hold it against us. So we can't hold it against ourselves. And I don't know how I, no one can do that for you. Only you can do that. And so verse nine through 10, understanding is a further result of seeking wisdom. A person can live ethically when he has wisdom in his mind and heart. God's wisdom entering a person and making him delight in godly knowledge is regeneration. And so regeneration is such a Christianese word. Um, regeneration, when you hear that, people are really smart. They sound really smart. And they're saying regeneration. It just means to be born again, rebirth. Um, which is John 3, 16, what, uh, what Jesus was saying in John 3, 16. And Proverbs 2 through 10 asserts that wisdom gives both pleasure and sure-footedness in life. <laughs> the more wisdom one learns, the more one desires and enjoys it. The protection wisdom gives, moreover, is that it keeps its followers from making decisions that will later bring only regret. So wisdom, again, is kind of protection. It's our shield. It's just like what it says here. You know, you think of the full armor of God. We put on our shield. We put on our breastplate. We put on our belt. We put on our helmet. Um, it's the same way. Wisdom is giving us all of those things. And, um, and so it's really important. I have never realized how important wisdom is <laughs> until going over this chapter. It's pretty darn important, especially in Proverbs in general. So, okay, does anybody have anything on that section? Two things. Number one, I just got a text message from my husband. He says, the storm is coming. I'm like, what storm? The sky is clear. Ladies, there are clouds outside now that were not there when Bible study started. Hmm. Just saying. Ooh. Just saying. Thank and number two, <laughs> I was going to say, I'm goosebumps, y'all are amazing. Second thing, I think that there's a distinction. You kind of brought it up again, how there's you know people that are really smart sometimes don't know what to say or how to say it it's something i've learned it was called social grace mm -hmm. and it was like one of those things that it almost it's not to be sexist yet it, i feel like as a girl it was beat into me for lack of a better way to put it it's that you know you're polite you do this you do that and i think a lot of times the guys kind of skirted around that and didn't have to do that and maybe that's why they weren't taught or they don't know to do it because they weren't taught it because I've seen that in just different people I have relationships with or have met you know in work or whatever and it's like being in a staff meeting and a guy will say something and it's oh that's a great opinion but if a girl were to say it oh how dare she why would she say that that's so negative and it's like those two people said the exact same thing. So I don't know if that's kind of like that plays into it too, when it comes to wisdom versus knowledge versus social grace is it seems like that kind of plays into it too, is, you know, sometimes maybe guys come off more curt or short tempered or whatever, because they weren't kind of overly taught to my husband calls it sugar coating. He says, has me all the time. Stop sugar coating things. Be honest well then i don't really know how to be honest so then when i'm honest it's whoa slow yeah. your roll girl that's a bit much it's like 
oh, I don't know how to be in the middle. <laughs> I either know how to like super sugarcoat it or be like ridiculously blunt because he says my face gives it away. Because he's like, you make these faces. I'm like, no, I don't. He's like, yes, you do. <laughs> he's like, that's how I know you're upset. You don't know what to say. And you're, you're trying to say it. He's like, but your face just, you don't look like a nice person. I'm like, oh, thanks. Good to know. <laughs> but I don't know if that kind of down the rabbit hole, but I think that plays into it. Well, Brittany had said, knowledge is knowing a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. So that's pretty, oh, <laughs> that's good too. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I think, yeah, definitely. Okay, so we'll go to the next section because I think on the last section, we're gonna spend a lot of time on. Um, so Stacey, if you don't mind reading verses 11 through 15. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. Wisdom will save you from the ways of the wicked men, ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse, who have left the straight paths to walk in dark ways, who delight in doing wrong and rejoice in the perverseness of evil, whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. Okay, so verse 11, having discretion and understanding will prevent self-destructive behavior. Okay, so this is a very, discretion will watch over you and understanding will guard you. Okay, that is, this is really powerful. This verse is extremely powerful and it really goes in with the end of the chapter as well. But this is where the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives saves us from going down the wrong path. Being in God's word is how understanding with, will guard you. Um, I think of it like the forum of God, like I mentioned earlier, we have to be protected as believers. And in order to do that, putting on the belt of truth every day, which is God's word, is so, so vital to keep ourselves protected. Um, this is why wise counsel is important. This is why whenever we go through things, we pray for those things. This is why um, I, I cannot say enough being in God's word, um, because that will protect us. Um, guarding our minds and our hearts, um, making sure that we are um, not putting things that we shouldn't into our mind, which we'll go to the end of the chapter. And then um, just making sure that we don't like, we don't allow self-destructive behavior to, to, we can, we can, we can do that in different ways though. And so self-destructive behavior doesn't look like the same for everyone. So it's going to look different. And so again, that I feel like Part of that could be beating yourself up over and over of your past. And you're just going to, because you beat yourself up over the past, um, and I'm saying this out of experience, you end up making a lot of really unwise decisions because you think, oh, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve that. And, and it's just like you just go down like the deep end instead of just picking yourself up and saying, okay, I can do this and I can't do it on my own though. And just seeing that it is the Holy spirit that helps us. And, and when we try to do it on our own, we're not going to, we're not going to defeat anything. Um, like, that's why I don't understand how people don't, whenever they don't believe in God, like, how do you cope? Like, no wonder why you're like doing all of these things. You know, I would do, um, I probably did whenever I wasn't a believer, but it really is seeing that that self-destructive behavior is really going to hurt not only you, but those in your, in your life as well. So just being really on guard with that. Um, verse 12 on evil, um, the perverse is literally turned over. And we see that we saw that in judges seven thirteen and second Kings 21, 13, making something, um, into something else in this case, turning truth into a lie. It's kind of like what's going on now. There seems to be a lot of things that seem like lies that are being portrayed as truths. We do this in our minds, do we not? We tell others how we are not good enough. We are, again, this is like the, on. this is why Digging Deep even exists. Whenever I did a Facebook Live one time and, you know, it's just like, you know, we look at ourselves and we think we're too fat, we're failures, we're ugly, we're too short, we're too tall, we're too blah, blah, blah. We fill in the blank. Um, and so whenever we do that, we're allowing the evil ways of this world to tell us lies and believe those over truth. We have to remind ourselves what God's word is. That's why standing on God's word, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, and so again, it's just like Psalms where it says that we saw Psalms all the time. And again, we cannot, we, we can go down just a dark, dark place spiritually and um, mentally in every which way if we believe these lies. 
that's why um you know there's we're reading screw tape letters right now and sunday night for church it's actually a parenting study and it is it is so true you know we have these demons and they're constantly trying to get us to sin and so we are always in battle um, against the un, unseen, like we're always in battle um, spiritually. And I, that's why Daniel is like one of my favorite books, because we're going to see how and Daniel, how he did that, um, how he went through that. And so there is a sp spiritual warfare we are in and we have to realize that. And sometimes we, we um, it's like C.S. Lewis said in the book, you know, sometimes we don't, we make too much of it. The devil made me do it and everything. And sometimes we don't make enough of it. You know, Satan doesn't exist, you know, so we have to be in the middle of that and everything. So uh, verse 13, this is from a commentary. They leave the paths of uprightness, which they were trained up in and set out and shake off the influences of their education and break off the thread of their hopeful beginnings to walk in the ways of darkness and those wicked ways which hate the light in which men are led blindfolded by ignorance and error and which let, led men into utter darkness the ways of sin are ways of darkness, uncomfortable and unsafe. What fools are those that they leave the plain, pleasant, lightsome paths of uprightness to walk in those ways. Um, they take a pleasure in sin, both in committing it themselves and in seeing others commit it. And this next verse is a great example of it. And verse 14, to do evil is to undermine society and applaud its overthrow. This is so happening. I remember a while back watching a video of people renouncing their faith. It was from England. I just remember that. And they just tore up their sheets of paper when they were baptized as a baby. You just saw a whole bunch of videos and it was just people just renouncing it. Just, um, it, it was like so evil. I mean, like it, all you saw was hatred. It was so sad, but scary um, because they were, they were like applauding one another. It was not only just doing that, but they were applauding it. They were blatantly blaspheming God. And um, it was so, so like, I have never seen anything like that. And so again, there's things like this that are happening. And so that is why it's so important to tell others about God and to be the light and to share, share the, the gospel um, with others. Um, it, it's one thing we, we are, we're called to be kind and nice, but we also need to share why we are kind and nice. And, um, and that is, that is so important. And that, again, that goes back to the very beginning of this, where it's mentoring and helping others and everything. Verse 15, crooked is opposite of upright. It is being twisted or, or distorted. So in verse 15, where we saw that, um, who's past our crooked and the ways are devious. This is just, we see that in people's lives. Do y'all do know anybody who just really, you just see that darkness in their life and you just, oh man, it's just, you're so sad that their, their way of thinking is so distorted. And you're like, oh my goodness, like, how do they think this way? You know? Um, and so, and those people are the ones that we are to really um, pour into. And those are not the people we're going to get wisdom from and advice from. Those are not the people who we're going to go to whenever we have issues, but those are the people that we are called to love and to um, share the gospel with them as well. Does anybody have anything on that section? To your point about it baffles you how people don't believe in God. There was a, a little saying I saw and I like it. I read it and I thought it was great. And then I wanted to change it a little bit, but it was like babies, bees, and trees. How can you not believe there's a God if you see those? Mm -hmm. And it was kind of neat. It's like, yeah, if you think about it, it's like humans, nature, physical nature. And then, you know, but it was like, yeah, it's like you get lost in the, the majesty of it. Or Cause we went to a museum over the weekend and we were standing outside and we were looking at it and it was like this just panorama of a canyon and it's just you're standing there and there's like vultures flying over and the wind was blowing and well it was a million degrees out but it was like you're just standing there and you're looking at it and you kind of like have that moment where you take a step back and you're like there's no way this wasn't created by god there's just no way you cannot explain it with dinosaurs and bangs or whatever it's just like there's just there's no way so yeah there's whenever we were leaving faith's game 
uh, the other day, it was like, we saw a double rainbow. And I just love that. It's just such a awesome reminder that God created this. Um, he's never going to flood the earth again. You know, I'm kind of curious how it's going to get, how it's going to go down, but it's like, um, but it's just, man, it's just so cool to see God's beauty. And oh, I just say, yeah, I don't understand. I definitely, my, don't. my son is a beekeeper and the more he explains things to my husband and I, yeah, I mean, it's just amazing, you know, the, the the bee. I mean, it, it's, I don't know, it's fascinating to me. So yeah, how can you say <laughs> God didn't create this? Mm -hmm. So Ruth, do you get free, free honey? Yeah, he brings us honey. I was going to say, when is Ruth's honey farm coming? Because I am here for it. I would like to sign up for the subscription box, please. <laughs> yeah, it, it's something. I, I don't know. It started out as a hobby for his boss, and it's become, he's got a, a, close to a thousand hives. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's it's just really something so good. it's so needed too so that's amazing i just the way that the bible always talks about wisdom and and um you know just like the you know you're talking about knowing when to say something and knowing when to not say something and most of the stuff in the bible says to just not say it like mm -hmm. people might think you're smart as long as your mouth is shut but when you open your mouth they'll know you're not you know or whatever like um but just the importance of living out our faith and just being that light in the darkness um of just living it and just doing it and being a person of an, a person of integrity and choosing the right path and then people are like, what do you have? Cause I want that instead of like, I'm going to hit you over the head with this wisdom that is so wise, <laughs> so important. Um, but also talking about older people, I had a couple of my dearest friends were 75 year old ladies that were coming to my Bible study for the longest time. Um, and they've both passed on now, but um, they were just so sweet. And I think that we have this like, older people are dignified and you just can't be yourself around them and goodness they were just girls like me like that that's all they were they just had a different number on their age and they were just like me it was it was just precious I love that have you ever thought I mean I learned this early on in in um back then catechism and the um priest always said think of it this way think T stands for, I mean, before you speak, T stands for, is it thoughtful? H is, is it honest? I is, is does it bring integrity? N is, is it necessary? He goes, and most people will stop right there. And then K is, is it going to be kind? So that stuck with me all these years. So when I want to lash out, at my sweet husband it's like think think oh. Mm -hmm. oh we lost her she froze come back Jim. yeah you froze sadly i really wanted to hear that but that is awesome so i don't know if y'all got that thoughtful honest integrity necessary and kind um i'm gonna need to apply that to my life and forever because like that is true but on the opposite end too I do think that um I do think that there are those who have that personality who can go in and speak truth and love but be bold and um so I think also it's like that balance because I am not like the nicest person sometimes whenever it comes to counseling and stuff. But I also have seen where if you have that, I think, again, it goes back to God knows those people who you need to have in your path. Um, and I, I, I know I have told the story before of this guy who came in and he was such a thug and I could not like he was telling his his girlfriend to abort and he was a pastor's kid. And out of all people, he got me as a counselor and the um, ultrasound nurse at, and who has my personality. 
And so he got both of us and he comes in and I am like, listen, bud, you know better, you know better, you know better. And um, I just, I got it. I, I, it had to be from the Lord because I got in his face and I was like, there is no way, you know, and I even told her, I'm going to have you go out the side door and leave him here. And he can stay in the, in the waiting area until he finally figures out that you're gone. And um, she was like, well, I can't do that. And I was just like, oh, but I just felt such, a, oh, it was so anger. And I was like, is this righteous anger? Or is it like just, or I'm just irked at him because he knows better. But we ended up talking to him and then the nurse talked to him and we were both like telling him how wrong he was and everything. And this is not a common instance. This is not how I counseled all the time. This was a very rare instance. So don't think I'm like this all the time. Um, but there are a lot of, a lot of things like, and I, I'm looking at the thoughtful, honest, integrity, necessary and kind. The only thing that was not there was the kindness maybe, but I do think that it was crazy because um, when we did the ultrasound, the, his girlfriend was like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't abort. And, uh, and I looked at him and I was just like, you better man up and you better raise this baby and you better, you better, you know, and, and he would just looked at me and I said, I, and I'm serious, you know, better. And, um, and so then I gave the girl, I don't know, I gave the girl my number and I told her I'd bring her dinner the next night. And so um, I told her to send her address. Well, then like maybe I get home and I'm still shook up because I'm like, Lord, did I fail at this? That was totally, I don't know where that came from. I don't know why I acted that way. I don't know why I was so like irked at this guy and I just didn't understand. And then um, whenever like four hours later, Sharon, the, the nurse um, called me and she said, Shannon, are you sitting down? And I was like, yeah, she's like, you remember, we called him thug boy. Um, and so she said, do you remember him? And I was like, yeah. And I said, how can I forget? I, and then she said, he called and he called and he was crying, like sobbing, like, <laughs> and he said, Miss Sharon, is Miss Sharon in there? And she was like, no, she's already gone home. And then he was just like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And he, he was just like, y'all were so honest with me and thank you for being that way he said if I would have had any other uh, like if I had had anybody else talk to me he's like but y'all were just so like true like everything you said was truth and I needed to hear it like that and he said and we went and told my dad who, who was a pastor and um you know because I told him look y'all you have to do is forgive but you have to change you can't just keep on doing these things and um and he did. And then I brought dinner the next night and he even, he, he like showed me like, look, Miss Shannon, I got all fruits and vegetables. She's going to eat right. I got a job. I got a job and I'm going to start working and I'm going to support this baby. I'm going to, and I was just like, you better, I'm, I'm going to tell you because I know where you live. And, and he, and they did. And they sent me a picture of the baby whenever she was born and um, she was beautiful. Oh my goodness, beautiful girl. And um, they just were like, you know, we just can't imagine life without her. And so again, it's always those instances where I think sometimes God gives us boldness and sometimes it may not come across as like the nicest and everything, but I know God has a plan, but I'm not going to say that that's successful every time. Um, but there are times where God will give us boldness and we're going to see that in the prophets coming up. I was not expecting to say all of that. I'm sorry if y'all have ever already heard that story, but let's go to the next section because the next section is going to be um, the hard one, even though we haven't got to the hard one, but go ahead, Stacey, if you can finish off the chapter. Okay. Wisdom will save you also from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman and her seductive words, who has left the partner of her youth and ignored the covenant she made before God. Surely her house leads down, the, leads down to death and her path to the spirits of the dead. None who go to her return or attain the path of life. Thus you will walk in the ways of the good and keep to the paths of the righteous. For the upright will live in the land and the blameless will remain in it but the wicked will be cut off from the land and the unfaithful will be torn from it. Okay. So I'll be honest here. These verses tug at my heart. Um, we have seen a lot of like in, in Proverbs, we're going to hear a lot about prostitutes and lust. Um, and after being on three mission trips and helping with shared hope, which is an amazing organization. If y'all can help with an organization financially, shared hope international is like, by far one of the best organizations to help with financially, if you can. 
Um, it's Linda Smith. She led it. She runs it, and she's absolutely amazing. Um, I cannot say enough. Enough. Um, they are amazing. This is an amazing organization. Um, we have to see how much lies are being thrown at these women. In Thailand, prostitution prostitution is pretty much the only way for some of these women to make money, and it's so sad. We have to remember they do not have the Holy Spirit. They do not have God in them. Um, they look at it, they're raised to know that this is what they are going to do. Um, thankfully, there are Christian organizations there that are coming in and giving these girls other opportunities. But it is so hard, other than by the Holy Spirit, to get these, girl, get these girls off the streets. Um, and I'm excited because Lori actually, Passionate Penny Pincher actually helps financially with one of the organizations that we went. And I'm, that's like one of the, I got to pick one year who we're going to help support and they were one of them. So it was really exciting. Um, but if there were not a demand for it, then there would, it, it would go away, right? Um, it's so easy for women to blame or for people to blame the women. But it, again, it goes back to the demand. Um, and when we did Shared Hope, um, we went through a training of it and, and it is, it's it, all throughout. You just see people constantly saying, well, prostitution is in the Bible. It was the first, you know, it's the first thing in the Bible and people will always throw that out there, but we have to remember the demand was there. Um, so I know that there is no man in this study, but if men in the church would live lives of morality and stop looking at porn, then it would make a huge difference. Porn is the deadly, like it is a deadly sin in our church. And it is insane. So I looked up um, the stats of porn. And so again, porn to me is the woman in this passage. When we look at this and the women, it is it is porn. Like that is the new way of prostitution. And if it if it weren't for porn sites, then prostitution probably would not exist as much because it, they go hand in hand. Um, and so these stats are mind blowing. So over 40 million Americans are regular visitors to porn sites. The average visits last six minutes and 29 seconds. There are around 42 million porn websites, which totals around 370 million pages of porn. The porn industry's annual revenue is more than the NFL, NBA, MLB combined. And it is also more combined revenues of ABC, CBS and NBC together. 47% of families in the U.S. report that pornography is a problem in their home. Pornography use increases the marital infidelity rate by more than 300%. 11 is the average age that a child is first exposed to porn, and 94% of children will see porn by the age of 14. 56% of American divorces involve one party having an obsessive interest in pornography websites, pornographic websites. 70% of Christian youth pastors report that they have at least one teen come to them for help in dealing with pornography in the past 12 months. 68% of church going men and over 50% of pastors view porn on a regular basis. Of young Christian adults, 18 to 24 years old, 76% actively search porn. 59% of pastors said that married men seek their help for porn use. 33% of women aged 25 and under search porn at least once a month. Only 13% of self-identified Christian women say they've never watched porn, and 87% of Christian women have watched porn. 55% of married men and 25% of married women say that they watch porn at least once a month. 57% of pastors say porn addiction is the most damaging issue in their congregation, and 69% say porn has adversely impacted the church. So as we read that next section, you know, or as we read that section, think about those stats. And so, Stacy, go ahead and read that again. After hearing those stats, read that. Okay. Wisdom will save you also from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman and her seductive words who has left the partner of her youth and ignored the covenant she made before God. Surely her house leads down to death and her path to the spirits of the dead. None who go to her return or attain the path of life. Thus, you will walk in the ways of the good and keep to the paths of the righteous, for the upright will live in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land and the unfaithful will be torn from it. Okay, so look at all of these stats and we wonder why the American church is going downhill. I mean, this should show us why. It is the, it is the, wayward, it is the wayward women, but it's not... We can't put the blame on the women totally. Yes, some women do enjoy that. And there we did find that in Thailand for sure. But 
no one grows up and says, oh, I want to be a prostitute. No one. I don't know anybody who has said that, you know, um, that is not something that people desire. It's something that happens. And again, if the demand was not there, then we would not have to worry about this. Um, so verses 16, that the forbidden woman has turned away from her husband and wants to destroy society. The stranger has a, allegiance to a different community and has no interest in preserving the community of faithful, flattering speech always has an agenda that includes destructive or other of others. This warning applies to any person who appeals to base instincts with ulterior motives. And then verse 18 through 19, joining the forbidden woman stranger is self-destructive. The Hebrew word for departed spirits is the same as the Rephraim, which is the Canaan, Canaan people. But in Hebrew poetry, it refers to the residents of the grave. Um, and so self-destruction goes hand in hand with this. When one is cheating, you are not only hurting your spouse, family, um, most of all, you are causing separation with God. So you're, whenever people are doing this, they think no one sees them, but they do. People do, God sees you. And so I think that that's why porn is so easily attained um, because this is something that um, people, it's, it's that secret sin. And I know about that because I held myself, I held, I beat myself up constantly for my past and my secret sin. And so this is a different secret sin, but this is one that has addictive behavior. This, this can hurt so many people involved. And imagine, again, we talked about spiritual warfare. Imagine the spiritual warfare that's going, in, going on in a house that has porn um, viewed. Imagine the, the spiritual warfare going on in a church that has porn viewed. We've seen what pastors are looking at this. Youth pastors, I mean, we're seeing this. Not, this is not just outside the church. This is more in the church than it is outside. And that is why this is something that has got to get addressed. Um, and it just, it hurts me. And I, I, I have all of these passions in my life that I just think that I want to go into every church. And this is where I feel like where I would not go in as a nice kind, the kindness will just totally leave me on this too, because I would totally be in the men's space and tell them, or in, even women though, after reading this, it was just mind blowing. You know, I will be honest as a child, when I was a teenager, I like me and my friends, we would watch porn and make fun of it though. We would not like, we would like laugh at it. We laugh at the music and everything. I didn't even think anything of it. You know, it was just like, we would make fun of it. And then like, when I became a Christian, I was like, oh my gosh, that was so wrong what we did, you know? Um, and I don't even know how my best friends, I mean, I've never addressed that with them um, because they were guys and we, we honestly did it out of like making fun of it. And it's just horrible now looking at that because I was like, how God has protected me from not getting an addiction because I definitely have that addictive behavior in my life, um, pat, like personality. Um, I am grateful for that. I'm so grateful. Um, but again, we look at this and it says her house leads down to death, but how many by this means have lost their souls, fleshly lust by a specialty fight against the soul. And that's first Peter 2, 11, and nothing has so much enriched hell says the beautiful faces. And so again, this is something that um, it's just, it's so hard to grasp that we can, some people can justify this and well, I'm not physically cheating. I'm not, you know, so I'm not hurt. hurt who am I hurting? Who am I hurting by just looking, you know, I, I've heard many, many people say that and, um, you know, but what can we do? This is mind blowing. Um, and Jan, just like you said, it's heartbreaking. And so, oh, Brittany, thank you for bringing that up. Erotic novels. Okay. So, uh, gray shades of 50 shades of gray. Yep. That was a huge book series that came out and, um, I never read it. I never had desire. And then the movie came out. Y'all, I was such a judger. We, there was another movie that came out the same time as 50 shades of gray. And I can't remember what it was, but it was the Christian version, like not version of it, but it was a Christian movie that came out and it intentionally came out the same weekend. It was an actually an excellent movie. Um, it was a little rough on some, some scenes, but it was excellent. I wish I could remember what it was. Um, and so whenever we went to that movie, cause we wanted to support it over 50 shades of gray. Y'all, I, I am not kidding you. I gave everyone, Stacy, you said your face you can see everything. You can see my face. I looked at every single person that was waiting in a line to go see that 50 shades of gray movie. And I looked at them and I said so loud. And my husband was like, Oh my gosh, we're going to get shot. 
And I was like, I cannot believe, I wonder how many of these people are going to go to church on Sunday after watching that movie. Like it for real, like it is just awful. And then again, Brittany, that was, that was a, a supposedly, I don't, I never saw it, but it was supposedly like a, like a soft porn type movie and book series. And so when we even read books that are uh, about these things, then we have to really, again, guard our heart and our minds. And, um, and what is, what comes, if trash comes in, trash comes out. And so we have to be um, very conscientious of what goes in our minds. Um, I okay, work so in a library and yeah. yeah, some of the books, oh my, some of the authors and um, they're classified as urban fiction. And some of these authors, the books get stolen. I mean, but I just don't understand it. I, I've never read any of those books and even like the movies. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's weird, but it is, that's, it's, it's a way of escape and, and getting something that you're, you feel like needs to fill a void that you're not filling. Um, okay. So what do we do about this? This, these, this is it, it, like, that's the one thing after reading this, I was like, this is so depressing and it's so hard. So what are we, how can we be proactive of this? The Barna study that this was from, which Barna studies are awesome. I love Barna studies. Um, they reveal that 90, 93% of pastors see porn as an increasing problem in the church, but only 7% have any plan to deal with it. That is such a problem on the pastor. Like they are called if they, I feel uh, like this irks me to no end. I feel like if a pastor knows that their congregation is struggling with something and they're not addressing it, that that is an issue with that pastor, that pastor, you know, and I, I loved one of the churches that we visited one time because the pastor, you know, it was a mega church and he had a, they had their sermon series planned for the year. But once he realized that there was a lot of divorces going in the church, he changed his whole plan and said, no, we need to address marriage. And so he changed and he started, they started addressing marriage that helped their church. He knew his church well enough that he knew that he needed to deal with the problem that was going on in the church. I love that. That is what pastors should be doing. Talk to your pastor about this, about preaching on this issue. Um, and it, again, if you know that these stats, ask him, um, you know, and then we, if, sorry, I'm going to go on script because, okay, so if you know, if there's such a struggle in the church, why is he not speaking up? If your church, if your pastor is not talking about this, well, we see because most of the pastors struggle with themselves. How can you preach on something that you struggle with yourselves? You know, you have that condemnation and, but there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If a pastor is vulnerable, our old pastor, um, he struggled with this and he brought it to the church. And that's what made us really love that church. And we were so sad when he moved away because he addressed it because he himself struggled with it and he got accountability. Um, hold your pastor to accountability and make sure um, as as mothers, um, we need to make sure we have filters on our computers, even if you have little ones. I remember, y'all, I remember one time my nephew was, was over and he typed in um, something on our computer and it had, it had butt in it. And whenever he hit go, butts came up on it and he was petrified. I mean, he was little and he was petrified. He was like, and he like hyperventilated. He thought he's going to get in so much trouble. And I was like, what did you do? And so um, we, if we had, we didn't have filters. That's when we realized we needed, we really needed filters. And so um, even if you don't think if, if no one in your family, you think struggles with it, if you're like, oh, you know, you know, my husband's fine. He doesn't struggle with this. My kids are fine. They don't struggle with it. If, and if you don't struggle, you know yourself better than anyone else. And if you do not struggle with this, you need to be the only one in your home that has the code um, and not let anybody else have it. Um, do this with the TV and do this with your computer um, and make sure that if you struggle with it, then you need to have other filters put in place and um, definitely I get some kind of filter. I don't know how that, like how that would work, but um, if you struggle with it, get accountability, 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 accountability. I cannot say enough for, um, and if your husband struggles with that, he needs accountability. If your pastor struggles with it, 
get accountability. If your husband doesn't struggle with it and your pastor does, there's accountability. Um, or not only that, if you have another person who has struggled with it in the past and they're, they have broke free from that, have them hold them accountability because they understand what they're going through. Um, when there are, there are strength in numbers. And if the, if the church, just imagine if the church would stop looking at this, all of these numbers would change and the demand would go down so much. And that is whenever we did shared hope training, that is what we realized. If the demand can go down, then all of, all of these girls would not be trafficked and the trafficking would go down. Look at like that. The church should be doing this and, um, and they're not. And so that's why this is so important. Um, and then verse 20 through 22, these good people have moral excellence figuratively to inhabit the land means to enjoy God's blessings through a relationship with him. While the warning of Proverbs 2, 16 through 19 is specifically against illicit sexual relations, this suggests a broader application. Those who choose the good will to enjoy God's blessing eternally, but the wicked um, will be eternally cut off from God's blessing. Treacherous people are unfaithful in relationships. Here they have abandoned commitment to God. What a way to end. We live in a life, if we live a life of integrity because we love God and want to do right, we are not earning our salvation. We are living out our salvation. This is a great verse on making sure we are surrounded by people who will point us to Christ, making sure we are around good people. And this does not mean we cannot pour into non-believers or never hang out with unbelievers, but it means that we come to asking for advice or guidance, making sure that they are led by the Holy Spirit. Um, and also making sure our leaders live with integrity, which again, why it's so important we address our pastors and hold them accountability. This is something that really is like, obviously you can tell I'm passionate about. Um, this is also showing that God created sex inside of marriage for a good thing as Katie's son comes in the door, it comes in the room. Um, and because of that, um, he, it's not a bad thing. And I think that's what's teaching people. And that's what I, as many girls as I've told that to, it's like, it's mind blowing because it's a good thing. God created it. And so therefore it is good, but it's good inside of context. Um, and that what happens is the Satan from the beginning has used it for the negative. And we have as a church should be coming up and we should be saying it for the positive. This is a beautiful thing, but it's inside of marriage. Hey, this can really ruin marriages. If you have a son and if he has the expectations of his, his wife being what is on that computer screen, um, Fireproof shows such a great example of that. If you've not seen Fireproof, you need to. I think the reason why the people addressed it in Fireproof is because they knew it was an issue. Um, and so I would definitely, um, that, that was, I'm telling you whatever I did, I really felt led to do Proverbs 2. I knew I was gonna have to address this and I knew it's gonna be hard. I know it's mind blowing and it's opening eyes. I don't know, have any of y'all heard those stats before? A little bit. Can I share something though real quick? Yes, please do. Um, with, I've got two daughters. One's 25 right now and the other is 16. And I know a lot of people are going to hate me. I don't care because I'm just following what Jesus does. And this, what you're saying is so true. And I believe a lot of this starts at the home, how the kids are raised. And when my girls were babies from like birth, because we live in Florida, everyone wear swimsuits all the time. It's just like a natural thing to do. And I refuse to let them wear bikinis. I'm just like, no, you guys, your bodies belong to God. That's it. You can wear like a two piece. If it's like a tankini when they're teenagers, I let them go from one piece to like a two piece only if it was like a tankini and covered them. And, um, that's all they did. A lot of their friends made fun of them from elementary school through middle school and high school. And, but that's just what they did. And then when my oldest, they did a, she did like a senior trip. The high schools all do this. They go on like a quick school senior, skip school day and they all go to the beach for a day. Um, she was wearing what she normally wears like these swim shorts and like a t-shirt over her um, bathing suit. At the end of the day, two guys that were not Christians they're just regular kids from public school. They approached my daughter and said, hey, we really respect you. Um, the other girls we like because what they dress and they look sexy and they, we're really attracted to them, but we respect you for your mind and you don't dress like the other girls. You're different. And because of that, we want to be your friend. And that was just hearing two non-Christian guys that are 18 year olds say this. And my daughter's like, that's cool. She came home that day and told me the story. And I'm like, 
See, you know, it's like you just follow God's way. Yes, you're not going to be popular through, but people will respect you. And if you just follow God. And I just really believe that girls don't need to be in bikini. And that's just how I feel. And I just feel, I don't know, it's my two sons. Karen, we have the rule where no cracks and no cracks in our house. Don't show any cracks. Like, and that's basically the rule. And yeah, it's tough. So okay. it's exactly. very, very hard. Sorry. But yeah, it is hard, but God will bless them. And modest is hottest. It, right. <laughs> when I was growing up, my dad said, um, go get me some ice out of the freezer. And we had a bottom freezer. And if I leaned over and he could see my upper part of my legs because you know minis were real you know prevalent then he'd say I think you need to go upstairs and put on something else to wear so he always checked it out before we left the house always wow. you know one of my very 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 favorite things and I taught my granddaughter this um, I had my best 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 friend spending the night um, right before high school started we hadn't started high school yet and my dad a big burly Irishman um and believe family was everything got in these roses my girlfriend and I are sitting on the bed and getting all excited and he said look you know look like young ladies look what I brought you and he handed us the one rose he goes smell smell the rose oh look at the petals and he goes pass it back and forth and we did that and I kept looking at my dad thinking what the heck is going on it's like, does it smell good? Can you see the center of it? Take, you know what, take a petal for yourself. You know, so we did that. And he goes, give me the rose back. So I handed him the rose back and he goes, here's another rose. Okay, wait, which rose do you guys want? Well, obviously we wanted the untouched rose, the one that looked beautiful. And so he said, this is what happens to women, young girls, that allow themselves to be picked over and passed around. You want to be the perfect rose. And to this day, every time I think of it, it's like, oh, that's so true. You don't want to be passed around. Um, you know, I like the idea of bending over and getting ice and it's like, nope, go back upstairs. But it, it's what we teach our children is if we respect ourselves, others will respect us. And if they don't, they don't need to be in our little tribe of people. Mm. My dad would always go clothing shopping with us. Oh, wow. And then, and then it was a, no, you're not taking that home or eh, that's really not a good idea. Let's try something else instead of like getting home and getting dressed to go somewhere. And then all of a sudden it becomes this big, like it just heads it off at the pass. But my dad always would much prefer shopping rather like if one of my parents had to go shopping, my dad would prefer to go shopping over my mom. <laughs> Wow, that's a man. Um, yeah. But then also, you were talking about this rampant pornography. Things are much more accessible. Even when I was like, when I was in my upper teens, we finally got a family computer and a family email address and had one device in our house. And now, in my own home, we personally have like 10 devices. Mm -hmm. And it just is so accessible. Yeah, mm -hmm. so much. Covenant familiar. eyes. Covenant eyes is a great. Um, um, my kids don't have a lot of access to any of my devices at all, and we did just get a Gab phone for my daughter, and there's no internet access. She can only text or call certain people that are in her phone. It has um, GPS on it, so I can know where she is and whatever. But there's no internet access or social media at all on her phone Good. for herself. So, Good. yeah. So our church recently did, our pastor did a sermon on pornography. So I think that that was like, and it was really good. And it was about like the whole topic of everything was on the end times. So obviously depending on, um, you know, your view, every not everything he says would agree with everybody here, right? Because of, you know, different doctrines about the end, but um, it was just really good, and I thought it was awesome that he had addressed it in front of the whole congregation. Um, and then you were talking about the statistics of pornography, and I looked up something that I had heard from another one of our pastors, and it was a Barna research uh, study. And 
you guys are all talking about how we raise our kids and how you were raised. And so the survey was about like the statistic, um, the probability of like age groups coming to Christ. So um, children ages five to 13 have a 32% probability of accepting Christ. But once you get older from 14 to 18, it drops to 14% likelihood that they would accept Christ. And then unbelieving adults age 19 and over, it drops to six, six percent, just six probability of becoming a Christian. And I just thought like when, again, as you were talking about the statistic numbers for pornography, like I, I wanted to look that up because it's just, it is so prevalent. And now they're getting at the kids earlier with different indoctrination stuff and it's scary. Um, and then one more thing that, uh, you guys were talking about um, like how do people question how there's not a God, right? Well, everything in the world is designed to make us question if God is real. Like all of the lies of the enemy in pornography and sex in general and abortion, like there's so many lies surrounding all of it. Um, and I don't know how true this story is, but someone gave this to my husband. And I'm, it's a fossil. Like that's, it's a fossil, but the story is that it came from Mount Everest and the only way it could have come from Mount Everest is if there was a flood. So, um, like a flood that covered all of the land. And so again, I don't know where he got it and if that part of it is true and if like, obviously there was a flood, but the fact is, I don't know if this is actually from Mount Everest, but the fact, but I just thought that that was really interesting. Um, you know, and I'm sure there were fossils found on mountaintops that, you know, people aren't going to always talk about. Um, but yeah, I just, that was a lot. I know. I just, all the little things that were adding up throughout <laughs> our discussion today. Yeah, that was great. I, say that. I dig in my backyard and find seashells all the time and there should not be. But, uh, the only point I was going to make was, um, what I found interesting was how you brought up in the beginning that overseas it's sold as a way to make money as an income, as a job here, it's sold as fame mm. and yeah. the Gucci bag and the nice car. And what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a sex worker. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's considered taboo yet at the same time, it's sold kind of as the same thing as a means to fame and fortune and, you know, this ideal lifestyle. Whereas then if you go read interviews with those folks that do that, they are just so sad and they're just are miserable. And it, you know, it's like that both sides of it, but that's kind of what came up for me is in back to your point of if there wasn't a demand, well, here it's sold, and especially like me, I live right next to the porn capital of the world. So it's, pre I mean, like you can't even drive in certain places and it's not like screaming at you or just the way people look, um, simple things. My husband even saw like he's at the airport. He's like, he would be working overnight and you would see, he says like, I know who goes to Las Vegas to do things for the weekend he's like just work at the airport at night on a thursday and you'll see them all boarding planes and you know that's where they're going and you know that's what they're doing but you know you, nobody really talks about it but yeah like i said if, if the demand wasn't there you know supply and demand you know if there's no demand for it well the supply goes away doesn't it so right. much to your point but yeah it's I think that's the unforgotten part here is, is it's sold as a, in, from the, both ends of the spectrum from something as innocent as pictures of your feet to, you know, the other end of the spectrum. So it's like, I think that's kind of like the bigger picture is you, you nailed it earlier. Oh, well, no one knows and I'm not hurting anybody. No, actually that ripple effect, it, it hurts everyone. So Right. Um, and I'm going to have to go, y'all. We're going over and I kind of knew it was going to happen. But um, so I the book that if I've mentioned it before, it's called Renting Lacey. If you really want to read a hard the hardest book you'll ever read in your life, um, it's by it's actually by Linda Smith. 
it's it's the hardest book you'll ever read. Um, and you'll and I had to read it in sections um, because it was hard. It'll give you more of a feel. It's a nonfiction fiction book. She took real girls that have gone through trafficking and wrote it in a fiction style, a nonfiction style, whatever it is. That's not real, but she, it's real. It's it's and it's eye opening, and it tells you what's going on in the U.S. Um, as far as trafficking, which goes in with prostitution, and it's all it's all one. It's it, so again, um, talk to your else pastors um, if you can, and make sure you address this with them. And it's going to be a hard conversation, um, probably, or have your husband do it. Actually, make sure your husband's with you when you do that or, you know, um, but make sure that it, it is addressed. Because if we can start one by one at a, as a church, the body of Christ, we are all the body of Christ. We are all the church and, and, um, and address that. Then let's, let's fight this, y'all. Let's fight it. Um, we need it to be gone and away with. And it, it only is by strength and numbers. And it goes back to wisdom in the first section of this chapter. Those who have gone before it and have beat it can help one another beat it. And so we are not called to do things on our own. Um, but if we always have that condemnation, then we will never be free from the conviction. So we have got to stop being condemning ourselves and let that conviction win us, like bring us to Christ. And, um, and I think that that is going to change. It, it can change. So let's start and um, I'll pray us out. And then I hope everyone has a good week. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news for everyone that did not know these things. So um Lord, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you that it is here for us to be guided and Lord, that you give us wisdom, that you have opened our eyes to this. And Lord, we, we don't know what you're going to do with this, but Lord, we know that as, as your word, as we go through Proverbs, we're going to see this constantly, Lord, and let this be something that is just heavy on our hearts um, as the body of Christ to, to really pour into um, this so we can help those girls, especially, or even guys that are in, in the industry to get out of this industry. And Lord, we just pray for their hearts. We pray for them who feel like they have nothing else, Lord, and that they feel like they can't do anything else, Lord. But Lord, we just, we know that you can free them from this. We know that your grace is sufficient for them. Lord, and we just pray for those who are, are on the sidelines, especially for Linda Smith and her organization and all the other organizations that are helping, Lord. Um, we just ask that you will give them strength, Lord. We know they're, Colossians, they're growing weary, Lord. I know it has to be hard to see this day in, day out, but give them strength, Lord. Let us as believers be able to not only help um, by prayer, but let us also help by finances and helping them um, just to boost them in that way, Lord, to where they don't have to worry about that um, part of the ministry. Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you will be with those who are in bondage um, that are in our lives, Lord. Um, let this be an open conversation um, to be able for our spouses and our children. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, if this happened for us to get filters on our computer to stop this from happening in our home, we just praise you in advance for that. Um, we just ask, Lord, that you will guide us and direct us, Lord. Let us be wisdom um, for others and let us have wisdom that comes from you and share others with those who are around us. And Lord, we just pray that you will put people in our past that will give us wisdom. Um, and we just thank you that we're the body of Christ, that we can help one another and come alongside of each other. Lord, we just praise you and we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Y'all have a great week.